On behalf of the Federal Society, let me welcome everybody to the 20, uh, 2010 Appellate Judicial Candidates Forum in Raleigh. This forum is the second of a two-part series. The first judicial forum was held earlier this month in Winston-Salem. The video for that forum is available on the website of the Federal Society at www.fed-soc.org and as well uh, voterradio.org. Tonight's forum will be available on that website, www.fed-soc.org, as well as voterradio.org, and the website of our co-sponsor, the John Locke Foundation. The Federal Society will soon expand its website for these forums to include full videos, as well as selected clips for easier viewing to make them as accessible as possible to all North Carolina voters. We invite you to share these videos with anyone who's interested in learning more about the candidates. If you forget these website addresses, just Google the Federalist Society and it'll come right up. The Federalist Society is an educational organization that does not endorse candidates or take policy positions. Its foundational posi principle is the proposition that it is emphatically the province of the judiciary to say what the law is, not what it ought to be. My name is Robert Shaw, and I'm a lawyer at the firm of Williams Mullen and the chair of the Triangle Chapter of the Federalist Society. We have invited all of the candidates for the appellate judicial races this year, except the 13 candidates for the Court of Appeals seat vacated by Judge James Wynn, who has recently been confirmed for a seat on the United States Court of Appeals for the Fourth Circuit. We will host these 13 candidates on October 7th at noon at the John Locke Foundation. All the candidates have, we have invited, except for Judge Bob Hunter, are here this evening. And Judge Hunter sends his regrets that he will not be able to attend the forum. Let me remind the candidates that when I, when I hold up a yellow card, then you have 30 seconds left to answer. When I hold up a red card, then your 90 seconds will have expired. Our moderator will be the Honorable Willis Wichard, former Associate Justice of the North Carolina Supreme Court, and former dean of the Adrian Wiggins School of Law at Campbell University. Once again, I would like to thank our co-sponsor, the John Locke Foundation, and thank you for participating in the democratic process for electing judges in North Carolina. And now, let me turn over the forum to Justice Willis Wichard. Thank you very much, uh, Robert. Welcome to all of you for this exercise in small d uh, democratic governance. The judiciary is a very important uh, branch in our government. All of these folks are offering themselves for positions on the appellate bench, and I thank them for being willing to offer themselves in a forum of this nature, and all of you for coming. <clears throat> the questions have been prepared by the society. I have discretion to ask some of my own at the end, but I'm guessing that these will pretty much take the time. For purposes of the questioning, the candidates are paired, i.e., those running for the same seat, simply in order to give some order to the process at the outset, I have decided that in each group I will pose the question first to the incumbent, if there is one, and then second to the non-incumbent. In the one race for a Supreme Court seat, as Robert indicated, Judge Hunter is not here. Judge Steelman is a candidate for his seat, and the society has chosen to pair them for purposes of responding to the question, but they want to emphasize that they are not running against each other. <laughs> so, with that explanation of the format, I'm going to pose the first question to Judge Jackson, since that is, she is the one candidate here for the highest court. And following her response, Judge Steelman will respond. 
The question is, <clears throat> our nation has witnessed a continuing debate in recent years about the proper role of the judicial branch. This debate is often framed as being between, quote, judicial activism and, quote, judicial restraint. How would you describe this debate, and what is your perspective on it? Judge Jackson. I, I have been asked this question before, and, and I think that, you know, the terms have almost taken on a life of their own, so I'm a little reluctant to, um, to subscribe to them. I think, in my own mind, I, I would tend to be a little bit more towards judicial restraint. 